Hey, hey people, Swalada here. Have you ever overfed your pet on purpose? Did you ever install questionable mods on your family PC? Oh fuck! oh fuck, okay. Or have you ever looked at some inflation art and think to yourself, damn, that's kind of hot. Then today's video is for you. The FV4005 was the final tank that followed the fashion of the 1940s of bigger gun equals better tank. Bigger. The true peak of tank design, after this it was all downhill. Now after seeing some of these pictures you might ask yourself some questions. Like what is this thing and why does it exist? The FV4005 was a direct response to the IS-3, a Soviet heavy tank that was developed in late 1944 and was shown off in 1945. Now mainstream media and commie booths will try to convince you that the western allies were shocked to see rows of these new soviet heavy tanks during the victory parade in Berlin in 1945. However, this is a complete lie. The western allies already saw the artistic race between Germany and the Soviet Union to see who can make the most impractical and biggest tank during the second world war. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. With tanks like the Tiger, the Panther, and the Mouse from the German side, and the KV-2, IS-2, and ISU-122 on the Soviet side. So no, Dimitri, the West was not shocked to see that the Soviets were making an even bigger tank. I mean, the tank even seemed somewhat out of fashion after American dropped, you know, two atomic bombs. However, the British decided to continue what the Germans started, to see how big of a gun you can put on a tank before a dirt road becomes a bigger obstacle than an enemy tank. And I have to congratulate the British on this, because the FV4005 is at least as dumb as what the Germans came up with at the end of World War II, if not even dumber. In fact, even though this tank was built in the 1950s, it still holds the record of the biggest gun on any tank. The vehicle itself started development in the late 1940s, when the British decided it would be nice to destroy Soviet tanks from a far distance. I mean, uh, just in case. And to do this, they would need a bigger cannon, but I mean a lot bigger cannon. The caliber that they settled on was 183mm. Let's bring that real fast in perspective. When the T-34 was first introduced, it had a 76.2mm gun. The King Tiger, the tank that was at the end of the war, had an 88mm gun. And the IS-3, the whole reason why the development of this new vehicle was a thing at the first place, had a 122mm gun. This is how big the shells were for the FV-4005. Now some people might say this is overkill. You know how we call those people? Communist sympathizers. The British decided that there would be two stages with this tank. Stage 1 would be a prototype to see if there would be any problems with shooting a gun this big. And then when they were satisfied with the results, they would move on to stage 2. They would then build two more tanks that were meant for service and also for further testing. For stage 1, it was initially intended to mount this gun to a new purpose-built chassis, but due to time constraints, they used the Centurion chassis instead. So here we have the stage 1 tank, and to be completely honest, in my opinion, this looks a lot cooler than the stage 2. And yes, I know, looking cool doesn't win you any technical battles, but it does win a place in my heart. Now one unique thing about the stage 1, or the prototype, was that it had a load assist system. Which was crucially needed, because the FV4001 was gonna shoot projectiles weighing around 65 kilos. This load assist system would help with loading the heavy projectiles, while the case that weighed around 30 kilos had to be loaded by hand. Also keep in mind, this is not an auto loader like you see on modern French or Russian tanks, but a load assister. This would probably still be a big relief for the crews that had to operate these tanks, seeing how heavy the projectiles weigh. Just to keep that in mind when we move forward. Also unique to the stage 1 was that the gun could rotate around, which turned out to be pretty useless. The recoil of this gun was so great that the only safe way to fire the gun was pointing it forward or backward. If it would shoot from any other angle, it would damage the tank or the components. In fact, the recoil of the gun was so great that they had to put dozer blades on the back of the tank so that it could dig itself in, to at least absorb some of the recoil. The gun had a few more problems, for example it could only elevate between minus 5 and plus 10, which made it a little bit more difficult to aim at something. Now again, let's do a quick comparison. For example, a T-34 could elevate between minus 5 and plus 29, and even the Tiger II had an elevation of plus 15. Now even though this tank had some clear problems, the British Army looked at this and was like, yeah, you know what? That will do. And in 1951, two tanks of the Stage 2 variant of the FV4005 were completed. Get that ugly, disabled freak away from me. 
Sometimes we don't know how good we have it until it's all gone. Rest in peace stage 1, you were too good for this world. Ok, so what's different with the stage 2 in comparison to the stage 1? The most obvious change is the fully enclosed turret. Which uh, gives me some flashbacks to the KV-2. And this silly looking thing didn't even give much of a protection with only 45mm thick armor. Which is good enough for fragment splinters or small arms, but not much more. Also, remember that load assist system that they had on the stage 1? Well, yeah, it's gone now, replaced with an extra crew member. So, we already had one unlucky guy having to load the case weighing around 30 kilos, and now we have even one unluckier guy having the privilege to load in 65 kilo projectiles by hand. This in combination with the small space made the reload speed absolutely horrible, with it taking around 2 minutes to reload the gun. And that was if there was even something to shoot, because this thing could only hold 12 rounds at a time. Which makes sense just look at how ridiculously big these things were. And I hate to do it, but let's compare it one more time with World War 2 tanks. A T-34 could hold around 60 rounds, and a Tiger tank could hold around 92 rounds. And the solution to this problem was, they were gonna keep supplying shells with trucks. Which uh, would have worked out fantastic, I think. The stage 2 also didn't fix any of the problems with the elevation, or the problems with the gun only being able to shoot from the front. So besides the metal box that they built around the cannon, there was not much of a change. In fact, some might even say that it's a downgrade, with the loss of the load assist system. So not much of an improvement, but the army was still happy with the tank. Fire testing was conducted in 1955, with 150 rounds being fired through the gun, and the army describing it as satisfactory. But even though it was described as such, there were only ever made two FV-4005s in the stage 2 variant. So why is that? Why did they only make two of these tanks? Well, it was for a few reasons, some a little bit more obvious than others. Although the gun's hitting power was enormous, due to the large size of the projectile, it was subjected to crosswinds. The weight of the projectile was just too heavy, making the gun not really accurate. Which kind of defeated the point. The whole idea of having this big gun on the tank was to destroy tanks from a far distance. It was also a big clunky thing that had to be constantly supported because it couldn't carry much munition. And all of that would have been fine if there wasn't a better alternative to the FV-4005. But when the FV-4005 was tested, it was not the 1940s anymore. It was the 1950s, a time when the Melkar missile was in development. And uh, let me just tell you, this missile was far superior than whatever the FV-4005 could ever be, with twice the effective range and far greater accuracy. And on top of all of that, they were light enough to be mounted on smaller vehicles. So the FV-4005 was outdated before it was even finished. Therefore the project was already cancelled in August 1957. So what happened to the three tanks that were finished? Well, all three tanks got disassembled. The three Crusader hulls were returned to the army, and the gun of the stage 1 was given to the Shoeberry's Proof and Experimental Establishment, one of the stage 2 guns was offered to the Royal Military College, and the other one was kept. And with that it seemed like the FV-4005 was just gonna disappear. But luckily there is some good news with this tank. One of the stage 2 turrets came in the 1970s in a tank museum in Buffington, and it was just laying out there till 2007, when it was mounted on the Centurion Hall and placed on display at the museum exit. Which was great, because it meant that people could at least see what this tank was gonna be. However, there's even better news for people that really love big guns. In 2023, the tank museum announced that they were going to restore the FV-4005. They were asking for £20,000 in donations from the public, which they reached in less than 24 hours. And they're planning on showing it off in Tankfest 2024. That's the end of the video, this is just an update. There's a few small things that I wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to make it as short as possible. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone that subscribed to this channel this year. We went from less than 200 subscribers than more than 2000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane to me, so thank you so much for that. But the main thing that I wanted to announce was, we have a Discord server now. And confession time, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I think that I have all the basics. You have general announcements, which is pretty self-explanatory. History, where I can steal your ideas and make videos about them. Vidya, where you can discuss video games. Anime, where you can talk about your Chinese girl cartoons. Fanboy hip shots. Stop, I deleted this one. I just checked, only 0.6% of the people that watch my videos are from Finland, so... That kind of defeats the point. And then for the voice channels, I have talking behind my back and board meeting calls. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing, so we'll see how this goes. The link for the Discord will be in the description. Anyway, Happy New Year.